What's up guys? Welcome to another vlog. Here I got my 1995 Nissan GTR V-Spec. Let's go for a drive guys. One of the perks about being 7 feet is you can't fit in anything. So let me show you how I get in this little thing. Open the car up. It's right hand drive. Sit in like this. <laughs> Take both shoes off. Put them in the back seat. <laughs> and uh, hit the clutch pedal properly. <sighs> It's worth it though. It's worth it. Let's start her up. Let's go. So I remember last year, um, I contacted these, these, uh, these guys called Japanese Classics. Uh, they're one of the biggest Japanese importers in the U.S. And uh, this guy's name was Dan, he works there. And I messaged him one day and I was like, look man, if you have a, a 93, I mean 1995 R33 V-Spec GTR in stock, you know, let me know. Um, something that's, you know, almost completely stock. Um, you know, six, seven months passed by and he contacted me. He's like, hey, we have a silver one V-Spec. Um, it's got about 38,000 miles on it. Um, what, what, what do you think? Um, I saw I saw the pictures. I bought it sight on scene, which is kind of risky to begin with, but you know, I took a chance and uh, you know, they, uh, they, they got it in and they shipped it out to Ohio. And um, you know, it was perfect. It runs flawlessly. Um, the five-speed manual. Uh, so, so what these are, you know the R33 GTRs. You know they come with you know 276 horsepower, 277 pound-feet of torque, stock. But it's it's more horsepower, more horsepower than that. I mean you can even feel it too, especially when you rev it out because it revs out to 8,000 RPMs. Uh, it's pretty cool though because it shows 10,000 RPMs like it's like it's a speed bike. But obviously you don't want to rev it out, you blow the engine out. Uh, but the engine, you know RB26 uh, RB26 engine. Uh, they're highly tunable. You can get 850 horsepower out of these out of the things like it's nothing. It's all-wheel drive. It's got four-wheel steering. Um, what was unique about this car was uh, when it first hit the Nuremberg ring, it's the first one to crack the eight-minute mark as a production car at the time. So having some you know piece of history, uh, having it be a V-spec version, having low miles on it, and it's also you know one of my dream cars playing Gran Turismo. You know I'm, I'm very fortunate to have a car like this. Uh, and it being a manual because the R35 is a dual clutch, you know, shifting gears, you know, it's it's a, it's a different feeling. And especially with the country roads in Ohio, you can you can you can rip it up and have fun at the same time. It's a tight car, you know, I can't fit obviously, but you know what? It's worth it. It's worth it. <laughs> Alright guys, this is the heart of the beast of the GTR. It's a 24 valve twin turbo inline six engine pushing out 276 horsepower and around 277 pound feet of torque. Obviously it's a lot faster than that, but it's made it to a five speed, uh, five speed manual that pushes a 060 time to around 5.2 to 5.3 seconds. In 1995, that was really good. And this, this car was the car that beat the, uh, the eight minute mark in the Nuremberg time, the first production car to ever do it at this time in 1995. So that's what makes this car so unique. Remember, like, what was your first like stick shift car so, you ever drove? My first stick shift car was my brother's SVT Ford Contour. 
Um, I remember I was, he, we were driving within the neighborhood. I was shifting gears and, you know, I wasn't putting it, I wasn't popping it in a second properly and I was cranking it and, you know, they, you know, you know, first, first time where yeah. they shift and press the clutch and you don't engage it properly and not hitting the bike Stalled point. It. Right? Stalling it out every stop sign. And, uh, you know, I always remember that though and that was my first experience and, you know, at that time I never understood why, why people would drive manual, it just wasn't efficient, but as you start getting better, you know, you started, started to fall in love with, with the manual because everything else is automatic. How much did this car retail for when it came out? Uh, I don't remember. I think in, I think in like in the forties. What? But the thing about these cars, the thing about these cars is that if you get one that's a stock and in good condition, these cars will appreciate in value because there's a huge cult following with these. So if you actually maintain it, you want to drive it, you know, continue to take care of it. You know, you're not going to be. I'm not going to be losing money on this car. And obviously, I'm not saying cars are a good investment. They're not. They're terrible investments. But it's nice to have something though that won't depreciate or hold its value, and still be able to drive it and enjoy it. Like, what what can you find with that? I Hey guys, I appreciate you rolling with me with my R33 GTR. Shout out to Japanese Classics for helping me get it set up with this beautiful, beautiful vehicle. Please like and subscribe and stay tuned to our next vlog. Thank you guys and have a wonderful day.